Hello everyone, this is lecture 2 for MEC 310 Introduction to Mechanical Design. So this class will be divided into three parts and I will upload the videos of the three parts separately. In the first part, we will be talking about components of a mechanism and representation of a mechanism. As you may recall, in the last lecture, I stated that a significant portion of our effort in this class will be towards designing planar mechanisms. So what are the components of a mechanism? A mechanism is composed of rigid bodies and connections between rigid bodies that constrain or allow their relative motion. This is a good first intuitive definition of a mechanism to have in mind. We have some special terms for the rigid bodies. We call the rigid bodies links and the connection between the rigid bodies, we call them joints. So links and joints are the building blocks of all mechanisms. As an example, if you consider the four bar mechanism that I also showed in the previous lecture, the green bar, the red bar, the blue bar are all links of the mechanism and these are joints, more precisely revolute joints or pin joints or sometimes we will call them pivots of the mechanism. Now one thing you may notice and I also talked about it briefly in the last class is that although we call it a four bar mechanism or essentially a four link mechanism, apparently there are only three bars or three links. So one link that is also present is what is known as the ground link. And in this case, the ground link is essentially the line joining the two pivots. You may also recall that in the last class, I said that links and joints are abstract notions. You have their physical realizations, but a better way to think of them is as an abstract quantity that helps you in modeling, analyzing, and designing the physical entities. So let's elaborate on that a little bit more. So the first thing that I want you to note is the way we thought about the ground link. There wasn't really any physical connection present between these two pivots here. These supports to which the green link and the blue link are connected are bolted to some support surface. And that support surface may be complex. However, irrespective of that, the notion of the link or the ground link that we have is the line joining the fixed pivots in this case. Similarly, if I think of the red link, one point to note is the shape of the link does not matter as long as my pivot locations are fixed. So the red bar that is there and the new shape that I have drawn, they actually correspond to the same link in the context of kinematics. So if I draw some other shape, say like this, as long as the pivots are fixed at those two places that are shown in this picture, they are all kinematically the same link. So just because the actual rigid body changes, the link does not change. Mathematically, the link is the line joining these two points, the line joining these two points. And this is the length of the link. Similarly, for the green bar shown here or the green link shown here, the mathematical link is just the line joining these two pivots. And same for the blue link. It is the line joining the two pivots. I will elaborate on this more as we go along in the, in the class so that this notion becomes very clear to you. Now let us look at the four bar mechanism in motion. The green link is constrained by this joint here and undergoes a pure rotation. It's a one degree of freedom motion. The blue link also undergoes a one degree of freedom um, motion and it was also a pure rotation. So the joints are essentially constraining the motion of the green links and the blue links. Furthermore, the red link here 
actually undergoes a motion that is neither pure rotation nor pure translation. It's a complex motion. But the motion of the red link is again constrained by the motion of the green and the blue link. So the key point that I want you to take away from this is that by putting in the pivots at particular places on the links, we are constraining the motion of the links. Now, what are the different types of links? So links can be classified based on the number of connections or nodes. So a unitary link is a link with one node. A binary link is a link with two nodes. Ternary link is link with three nodes and quaternary link is link with four nodes. Usually in this class, since we'll be dealing with closed loop mechanisms, we will be dealing with binary, ternary, and quaternary links. And these are some example canonical pictures of binary, ternary, and quaternary links. And these holes in these pictures, they basically show the nodes. So now let us look at this mechanism. And what we want to do here is identify the binary links and the ternary links in this mechanism. So let's just let it play first. So as you can see, these red blocks, these red blocks, they are connected to these white links by a revolute joint here. This is a revolute joint. And they are sliding on this blue surface with respect to this blue surface. So the red block is actually a binary link. And I wanted to mention this because it doesn't look anything like the diagram we had in the previous page or previous slide. That was just an example. You need to look at the actual mechanism and you need to see which of the bodies are in connection with each other and constraining the motion of each. Similarly, the white link has two revolute joints, one with the red link and one with the green link. So that's also a binary link. And the same is true for this white link and the red link here. Both of them are binary links. Now what about the green link here? The green link has one joint here with the white link, one joint here with this white link, and another joint here with the ground. So the green link is a ternary link. And now what about the ground? Again here, the notion of abstract link, link comes in handy because it is hard to see here what is the ground link. So let's try to think of it a little bit methodically. This support surface here, this is on the ground somewhere. This is connected to the ground and this is connected to the ground. Okay. I have one connection between the ground and the red link here. One connection between the ground here and the red link here. These are both two sliding connections. And I have one revolute connection here between the ground and the green link. So my ground essentially has three nodes. So my ground here is a ternary link. Now let's look at joints, also known as kinematic pairs. A joint is a connection between two or more links at their nodes, which allows or constrains relative motions between the connected links. Now joints can be classified in several ways. By the type of contact between the elements, example, line, point, or surface contact by the number of degrees of freedom allowed at the joint, by the type of physical closure of the joint, force or form closure, and by the number of links joined, which is also known as the order of the joint. So I will explain each one of these four in more detail in the next few slides. So let's first look at joint classification by type of contact. So there are two types of joints according to the type of contact lower pairs and higher pairs. Lower pairs are joints with surface contact. So the revolute joint and the prismatic joint that we saw earlier are examples 
of lower pairs and you can see that easily because this is the rotating shaft on one link and this is the connection to the other link okay so there will be a surface contact between these two links similarly for the prismatic joint here there will be a surface contact higher pairs on the other hand have point or line contact the two gears meshed here actually has a line contact this cam so this is a cam and this is called a knife edged follower they have a point contact so these contacts form higher pairs now one point i want to note is that revolute joints are usually denoted by capital r and prismatic joints are usually denoted by capital p and this is a common notation that is used throughout kinematics so the revolute joint and prismatic joint that i showed in the previous slide they are usually used for planar mechanisms now for special mechanisms there are other joints which are actually kinematic lower pairs for example this is a screw joint this joint here is the cylindrical joint this joint is the spherical joint and this joint here is the planar joint so this is a one degree of freedom joint this is a two degree of freedom joint and these two are both three degree of freedom joints so let's see why so the cylindrical joint here can actually rotate about this axis and translate along this axis that's why there are two degrees of freedom the screw joint here can translate along this axis and also rotate about this axis however the translation and rotation are related by the pitch of the screw that's why there is only one independent parameter here the amount of rotation which actually fixes your amount of translation that's why it's a one degree of freedom joint the spherical joint here is a three degree of freedom joint a good example of a spherical joint is your wrist joint or your shoulder joint the planar joint here is also a three degree of freedom joint it actually allows translation along this direction translation along this direction and rotation perpendicular to the plane about an axis perpendicular to the plane so a planar mechanism can have joints with only one or two degrees of freedom why because if any planar rigid body has three degrees of freedom if you are constraining its degrees of freedom but still allowing it to move you can constrain at most two degrees of freedom so revolute joints and prismatic joints are examples of one degree of freedom joints there is also a term used for these called full joints although i do not really like this term and i will not use it because this term does not really make sense when you go to special mechanisms and joints such as this roll slide joint where you can you allow a rotation delta theta as well as a translation along this x axis or a pinion slot joint where you allow a rotation along this direction delta theta and you allow it allow a translation here these are two degree of freedom joints now it should be obvious to you for planar mechanisms a one degree of freedom joint provides two constraints that is three minus one and a two degree of freedom joint provides one constraint to the motion of the link now among all these concepts that we have introduced for the classification of joints this physical closure notion is the most complex notion so what do we mean by physical form closure and force closure form closed joint simply means that the joint is kept together by its geometry for example this slide here inside this slot if you leave the joint then it will just stay there it will not fall you do not need any external force to make sure that that constraint is satisfied on the contrary if you look at this picture here you need some external force to make sure that this link doesn't slide in this direction so that's known as a force closed joint you may you also need external force to ensure that it doesn't come off the surface how can we obtain force closure either through gravity or through spring loading or some other external force that you deliberately put in 
Now we will move on to the notion of kinematic diagrams. So kinematic diagrams are used to represent mechanisms in a very simple way, devoid of the geometry of the actual links and the actual form of the joints. So kinematic diagrams are abstract diagrams that helps you to understand the essence of the mechanism. In a kinematic diagram, a binary link is essentially is shown by a rod with two circles and these circles they denote the pin joints. Similarly, a ternary link will be a triangle with three circles or sometimes it is also shown uh, like this in the second row. The typical physical form of these links are shown in this column and you can see that although the physical forms may be very different, their skeleton diagrams are essentially the same. Similarly, a quaternary link is essentially a represented by a quadrilateral. This slide gives the kinematic diagram for the uh, joints. As I already said, a pin joint is represented by a circle. A sliding joint is represented by a block along with the ground. So these are the only two joints that we will need for this class. The rest of those cylindrical screw, gear, ball and socket, they will be usually used in special mechanisms and we will not really be considering them here.